Hi everybody, welcome to your webinar on summer programs. So in this webinar today, uh, we will be going over what is the difference with classes and events. We're going to be covering your policies, financials and reporting, how you can market your program using Jackrabbit, and then we will go right into the database and we will set up an event and we will also set up a summer camp as a class. Summer programs are a great way to keep your revenue flowing when regular classes are out of session and families are looking for options while school is out. Camps can keep current students involved and help you gain new students who are introduced to your programs because of the minimal commitment. So in 2019, 3.3 million students attended summer programs. That's a pretty big number. So what's the difference? So your summer programs, they may be different from your programs the remainder of the year. They might be a shorter session. They could have a class duration of possibly only one week. You may offer daily enrollment options. As well, there is the possibility that you would want a different set of policies. There may be a different registration fee. And as well, you may require a deposit or full payment prior to the start date, which you may not have during your regular session. So this or that, classes or events. So in Jackrabbit, you can set up summer programs as classes or events. Classes and events are different by how they are managed and the customer experience. Jackrabbit recommends setting up your camps as classes for many reasons. So stay tuned for some exclusive bonus content at the end of this webinar. Let's talk about your policies. So depending on your organization and the programs offered, you may need to create a specific set of policies for your summer camps. Some additional considerations when you're thinking about your policies may be your cancellation or refund policy may differ from your regular program policy and may include your right to cancel a specific camp due to insufficient enrollment. Another consideration, students may be on your premises for longer periods of time during summer programs and a lunch or snack policy may be necessary to inform families if students are allowed to bring certain lunches or snacks. So let's talk about your financials and your reports for your camps. So you want your category one to track revenue for your summer program. So if your programs vary greatly from your regular programming, you may wish to use a specific category one for just your summer programs. Next, let's talk about the enrollment detail report. Did you offer camps maybe last year? When camps are set up as classes and you use Jackrabbit's enrollment detail report, you can use that to then help you determine if you need to make any adjustments when comparing your camps from last season. Discounts. When you set up your program as classes and consider offering only a multi-student discount as demand for quality programming may be high. Always keep your bottom line in mind when you are considering offering a discount. And then lastly, we have the revenue summary report. So if you offered camps last year, you can use the revenue summary report to help determine if you want to increase or decrease your fees. As well, if you, if you were offering discounts and they were set up as classes, you will be able to see those totals there. So let's talk about marketing your program to everybody. So Jackrabbit has numerous ways that you can get your program out to your current, but also potential customers for summer programming. And this is through using Jackrabbit's email and our email templates. With these as well, you can also email directly from your enrollment detail report, any students that attended previous years that are not currently enrolled. You are also able to send an email to anybody from the lead file. So anyone that you have archived out, but you would still like to get camp information to them. And then as well, if you're using events, you can still email from any past events that you may still have. So next, let's hop right into the database. So first we are going to set up a summer program using Jackrabbit's event module. And then after that, I will go through setting up a summer program using classes within Jackrabbit. So the very first thing that we are going to want to double check is that I do have a category one set up. So in order to double check my category one, I will come over here to the gear icon, settings, general, drop down list, and category one. So you can see right here, all of my income categories. And I do already have a category one set up for camps. 
and I'm just going to uncheck that to hide from customers. And I click Save Changes. So before we go ahead and set up an event, I also want to remind you that if you were to come here to your events, list your event types, you could go ahead and just without having to go in and fully recreate everything, you could add dates. So I'm just going to come down here to this one on the bottom, Summer Fun Day. And then if I want it, so everything here is already set up. I would just want to come in here and add some date and times for this season. So I'm just going to come out of here. So next, let's just look at setting up a brand new event. So I'm going to click on Add Event Type. We're going to call this Summer Camp 2022. And my category one, I want that to be for camp. And then I'm going to click Save. So looking at your events, it does kind of already look very familiar, just like it would as if you're setting up a class. So we'll just go from top to bottom and left to right on all of our tabs. So first on our summary tab, you can see in the beginning, I already had when I set it up, that was my location for cheer. And then I'm going to add my fee. Let's just keep it simple at $100. And then do I want to allow enrollment for a family or is it $100 per student? So I am going to say student. If I want, I could add minimum and maximum ages and with my cutoff date and those dates work exactly the same as they would on a class. If I wanted to add additional categories, so we'll two or three, I could go ahead and add them there. And then we've got my maximum size. So let's just say for this one, we keep it small at 10. Next we have do you require parents to save a payment method before enrolling into this event type? So do you want their credit card, debit card information, or their bank account information? You can have both or either or. And then next, when your transactions post. So post event fee per, and then I'll show you this drop down here. So do not post a fee, post it per family, post it per student. So I'm going to say per student. I can also add a session. So if my session, if I want it to be 2022 summer camp, I already had this one set up. My transaction type. So what is this? So technically, yes, it is a camp, but this is their tuition fee for the camp. So I'm going to click on that. And if I wanted to add a subtype, I could, as well as any notes. And then next we have display on calendar. So do we want this to display on our internal events calendar? Most often you will want this to be yes. And then what would you like your label to be? So I'm just gonna keep it simple and just call it Summer Camp 2022. If I want it to, I could change the color. So let's just go with something bright here. So now we've got, it's going to show as yellow. Display to customers, yes or no. So I want people to enroll. So I am going to say open dates only. So I only want them to see dates that still have availability in them. And if I want it to, I could customize my calendar he header. And then as well, if I want it to have an online registration form graphic URL, and then as well, any additional notification emails. So I actually did see this come into the Facebook users group just last week. And somebody was saying that, you know, how come I never get any notifications on my events, that is where you would add that there. So next, I'm just going to come over here. So I will add my description. So we have two options for description. We can have internal. So that way, when your staff are looking at it, just want to maybe put a note in like, you know, don't forget to ask about allergies or anything else. And then your registration form description. So what is it that I want to show on my registration form for my parents? With events, you do have the option to ask a question. So I'll show you right here, Steve. So I'm just gonna say, is lunch required? And then I've got 
text box or I can just be have it for yes or no. So I'm going to have that. I'm going to make it required because I want to know. I'll save and I'm just going to add another question. Um, does your child have any food allergies? Again, I'm going to make this one a text box. That way your parent can say if they have a peanut allergy or a milk allergy, they can actually type that in for you. And again, I am going to leave that as required. And the next we have your agreements. So when it comes to events, you can have your own set of policies for your event. So if I wanted to add it. So I could just add it here. So I'll just, if I want to see payment policy, and then I would just put my, oopsies. Oh, where are we? So with your policies, you can have absolutely as many of these that you need to. So I'm just going to add just that one there really quick. Click on save. And the next comes our dates and times. So do we want to add some dates and times? Of course we do. So we're going to come up here to add event date and time. And then we're going to select when it starts. So let's just say this is a camp for July 4th. Just make it a week until July the 8th. It's going to start at 8 a.m. It's going to end at 4 p.m. I can assign it to a room. I'll just say floor A. So right now it is open. Allow enrollment per student. Again, it carries over my max size of 10. And this camp is going to go every day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then as well, if I know already, I can come in here and I can add my instructor. So I'm just going to click save here. And then now you can see all of the, these dates populated. So before we move on to classes, I'm just going to show you really quickly what it would look like on your calendar. So if we come up here to your calendar, so it's automatically going to open up the current month. So I come down here and you can see, so this is where I highlighted it in yellow. And this here shows me that I have 10 spots left right here. If I click on this, it will actually bring me right back to my event. So next we're going to set up my summer camps, but I'm going to set them up as classes. So just like with events, you don't always have to totally start at the beginning and recreate the wheel from start. So if I come over here to reports and come to class reports, if I come to classes search, I can search on a summer camp from 2021. It is not active. So you can see I have all of these camps that were set up as classes my previous year. So if I want it to, and if I know things are going to be fairly close to being the same, I could actually come into here and I could actually copy, oopsies, and then copy this class. So all of this information is going to be copied over, but I would be using it under my new summer camp 2022 season. So next, let's just go ahead and add a class. So I'm going to call this summer camp class, just so you can see it again. I can change my location. I can, you know, add that room if I want it to add my instructor, if I want it to. And then my session is going to be summer camp 2022. And then I have my start and my end. So I'm just, again, going to have this one for just this one week. I could just set up the other one. This is the registration date of when registration would have opened. This date automatically pulls in from my session. 
And then again, what days do I want my class to happen? So I'm going to say it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whoopsie, Thursday and Friday. Let's have it start at the same time. So eight, two, four, and then it will automatically bring up my duration. Does this have a registration fee? No, my camps do not have a registration fee. So I'm going to uncheck that. And then we have our tuition. So let's just say, we have a max size of eight. Here, I'm just gonna make this 10. When you are setting up classes, or sorry, your camps as a class, you do have the ability to offer up the wait list. So for right now, I'm just gonna make that five. And then my billing method will be by my fee, my billing cycle. I'm just gonna put it to monthly. You can have whatever billing cycle that you want. And then again, if I wanna copy over my policy groups, I can right away. So I am actually, I already have a policy group in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on December 22. Is it displayed on my website? Yes. Do I allow portal enrollment? Yes. Do I allow trials for this camp? No, I do not. And then do I want to allow online registration? So let's save this one. Now, once I have this class saved, you'll notice that I do have another option when it comes to my tuition fee. So I can actually set up my camp as a per day. So right now for this entire week, it is saying that it is going to be $100 from Monday to Friday. If I wanted to select per day, I could change this to yes. And then you'll now see it automatically brings in that 100 for one day. But if I wanted to, I could say, you know what? If they take one day, it's $20. If they take two days, it's 40. Three is 60. Four is 80. If they take all five days, it's 100. So this way, when people register, they can register for just one day or two days. It will still be the same time. And then again, it's still by my class fee. I am deciding to not offer any discounts. If I did, I could pull this down here and I could add my multi-class, my multi-student discount. But when it comes to my camps, I currently do not offer those. So right here, I can see my number of openings if I need to come in here later on. And it gives me my openings per day. So if I had two people register right now for Monday and then one person register for Wednesday, it would show eight on Monday and then nine for the Wednesday. And then just back up here to my category one. And then just like with your uh, camps that you set up as an event, you would add your description. Do you want it to display on your website, allow registration, enrollment, trials, all of those are the same. You do have the option when setting up a camp as a class to add a, a video URL. So maybe your camps this year are gonna be hybrid and you wanna have students from all over the world attend virtually. You could absolutely do that by putting in a Zoom link right here. So I'm just going to save these changes. Awesome. So next, uh, one last thing that I do want to show you is that I'm going to show you what it looks like on the parent side in the parent portal if a parent were to register. So you can see right now I am in my parent portal. So when it comes to finding my summer camps, all I would need to do as a parent is come here to find classes. Okay. And then so right now this would be how I would find my camp as a class. So I've got some camps already set up here. So you can see those if I want it to register. And then if I want it to come in here, click on find event. And then this way it will bring up all of my events that I have set up here. And then right here, you can see this is the summer camp that we had just set up. So if I wanted to click here, I could add my students. So I'll just add one. 
And then you can see where my required fields came in that I added. Is lunch required? I'm going to say no. And then does your child have any food allergies? So you can see I can say no, or if I want it to, I could say yes, and then add peanuts. As well, if I wanted to add any additional information or comments, I can here. And then right here is where you will see your policies. So if I click on this, this is just where I put in that policy that payment was required. So I click OK. And there we go. So next, I'm just going to add that. I'm going to continue shopping. So one thing that we can do when we are uh, choosing to enroll into your event, sorry, by a class is that we can actually filter this down by session. So this will make it a lot easier for your parents to be able to distinguish that they want to get into the 2022 summer camp session. So I'm just going to add that filter. So you can see all of these camps that I have here. And right here, I am going to click on this summer camp as a class just to allow you to see what it looks like for the parent when they are enrolling this way. So I'm going to add this to my cart and then you can see it's asking me to select my days. I can select all the days. I can select just a couple if I want. So if I do Monday, remember I said it was per student. So Elliot and Spencer, let's say, and then I'll do Tuesday, just Elliot. If I wanted to add additional comments there. And again, now I have my summer camp policy. So I want to view that. And this is my summer camp policy here. And then I would agree. And then I'm just going to add this. And now let's just go to my checkout so you can see how that looks. So right now you can see Elliot does have a fixed fee. So when that happens, you'll just note this little blue note here. It just says no fixed fees will post your account until that's my test training database has reviewed the status of your account. So that way, if they had a fixed fee, let's say, for example, for classes only, but you want to make sure that they get the full amount applied for their camp, it gives you this nice little alert. And then we've got items not covered by fixed fees. So we've got for Spencer's camp class and then Elliot's camp. And then you can see here what the discounts were. And then I can accept my enrollment. And just like that, my students are now in my camp. So if I were to, let's just come back here. Oopsies. If I were to refresh this, you will now see. So I have my sizes now show up right here for me. So that is everything, everybody, when it comes to, you know, going through setting up your classes as a camp or an event. But I did want to just go over with you just a little treat on the end for policies. So let's just have a look here. So here under settings, policies. So with Jackrabbit's new policy enhancement, you are able to have different policy groups and assign those policy groups to certain classes. So you can see right here, I have a summer camp policy group and or my summer camp policy. This is all of my verbiage that I have there already in it. It's titled summer camp. You can see I've got these groups and then these are the classes. I'm just going to squeeze in this grid. So you can see which classes I have that policy assigned to right here. So all of these camp classes all have those policies there. So if you want it, you could actually add to your policy group by selecting other policies, maybe some of your policies from your regular se regular season, such as your photo and video release, they may actually apply to your summer camps. And then you can go ahead and edit those groups so right there. So if I were to come here to my summer camp and I want to add something to it, I could just add it there. And that is it, everybody. Thank you for attending.